Hello everyone, Dr Polaris here. Of Australia's many charismatic Pleistocene megafaunal species, one of the most infamous was Megalania, or more accurately, Varanus priscus. This enormous relative of the Komodo dragon was one of the continent's apex predators, being the largest terrestrial lizard to ever live. Although, given its modern fame, it's somewhat surprising to learn that the genus is represented by remarkably fragmentary remains. This has made estimating the overall size of V. priscus very difficult, but nonetheless it would have been a formidable animal, hunting large marsupials and flightless birds with its slicing, backwards curving teeth and potentially venomous bite. As its outdated name suggests, it was once thought that this giant lizard was related to, yet distinct from, the extremely widespread and speciose genus Varanus, making up the monitor lizard family Varanidae and containing about 80 species ranging from the tiny V. acanthurus, representing the Aki monitor of northwestern Australia, to the massive V. komodoensis, being the famous Komodo dragon that is native to the Indonesian islands of Komodo, Rinka, Flores, Gili Dasami, and Gili Mutang, with these predatory reptiles ranging from the southern tip of South Africa to the islands of the western Pacific. These animals are renowned for being among the most active and intelligent squamates possessing adaptations that allow them to breathe more efficiently while running than other lizards, including the presence of air sacs akin to those found in Sauriscian dinosaurs such as modern birds. Varanidas of family originated during the late Cretaceous roughly 80 million years ago, although the modern genus Varanus first appears in the fossil record much later, during the early Miocene circa 20 million years ago. The oldest remains attributable to the genus have been found in southern Asia, suggesting that this is where the common ancestors of all living species emerged. From here, these monitor lizards diversified rapidly, with there being several notable species clusters, or technically subgenera, with the most important for this video being the Varanus subgenus, also known as the so-called true monitors. This grouping is endemic to Australia, New Guinea, and eastern Indonesia, evolving from ancestors that island hopped or swam to the land down under. True monitors are characterised by their wide skulls and strong teeth, with the nostrils cranially positioned on the sides of their snout. Their teeth are curved, serrated, and concealed by thick lips, making them invisible even when their mouths are open. Their tails are heavy and muscular, being thick at the base and laterally compressed towards the end, which makes them effective weapons that are utilised to both strike prey and potential rivals. Most true monitors have lean bodies with long tails that can take up up to half of their entire body length, but the largest species are very robust and have proportionally short tails, which may have also held true for V. priscus. The parenti, however, has proportionally long limbs, with their bodies lifted high above the ground, giving them incredible manoeuvrability and allowing them to run fully on all fours. True monitors are usually born with thick stripes of highly contrasting colours on their bodies, which slowly morph into the loose speckles or stripes of the adults. Morphological and phylogenetic evidence strongly suggests that V. priscus should be placed within this grouping and not in its own separate Megalania genus, although it's unclear which living species is its closest relative. Some studies have found that it was the sister species of the crocodile monitor, a large arboreal form native to New Guinea that has a distinctive olive greenish hide, blunt snout and highly elongated tail. On the other hand, V. priscus has also been considered to be a close relative of the Komodo dragon and V. varius, the smaller and more lightly built lace monitor of eastern Australia, which can still reach a respectable 2 metres or 6 feet 6 inches long. V. priscus itself appears in the fossil record during the Pleistocene roughly 1.5 million years ago, and is known from partial and relatively rare fossilised remains. No complete skeletons or intact skulls of this animal are known, and the limited amount of skull material found to date was not associated with postcranial elements. Vertebrae and isolated teeth are the most common fossils, and isolated lower jaws and limb bones have also been found. Remains of V. priscus have been recovered from most of Australia, with the notable exceptions of Tasmania and Western Australia. Given the fragmentary nature of its fossils, we lack a great deal of information regarding this predator's appearance, anatomy and life history. Size estimates have ranged wildly over the years, 
with lengths of up to 7 metres or 23 feet, and maximum weight of an astonishing almost 2 metric tons being well publicised online. Although more recent studies have tended to downsize these figures substantially, average lengths between 3.5 and 5.5 metres, or 11.5 to 18 feet, are now thought to be far more plausible for fully grown adults, with an average mass being harder to determine, but perhaps being in the range of 320 to 575 kilograms, or between 710 and 1,268 pounds. Despite the downsizing, that still makes for one massive lizard. However, given that adult male monitor lizards can grow to notably larger sizes than the average for their species, it's plausible that some exceptional individuals of V. priscus may have reached over 6 metres or at least 20 feet long. While some of its close living relatives are quite fast and agile runners, given its size and heavy build, V. priscus would have been a fairly slow moving ambush predator lurking in the undergrowth or behind rocks, before lunging out and striking at big herbivorous prey, such as diprotodontid marsupials and dromornithid birds. However, like living Komodo dragons, it wouldn't have been a fussy eater, targeting a whole variety of smaller animals and probably consuming a significant amount of carrion. It was once thought that large reptiles such as V. priscus were the undisputed apex carnivores of Pleistocene Australia, due to the supposed inferiority of marsupial predators in comparison to their placental counterparts on other continents, although this is now seen as a very outdated and unfair observation. It's been demonstrated that Thylacoleo was a far more common animal than V. priscus, and was a formidable carnivore in its own right. In fact, a recent 2020 study found that the diversification of varanids in Australia was mostly due to favourable climatic conditions and intense competition between different varanid species, with these animals having minimal niche overlap with marsupial carnivores. V. priscus prowled around the Australian outback for many tens of thousands of years, even living alongside its smaller relative, the Komodo dragon. Indeed, while endemic to a smattering of Indonesian islands today, Varanus komodoensis originated in Australia, with fossils recovered from Queensland indicating that the species first appeared during the early Pliocene roughly 3.8 million years ago. These animals died out by around 330,000 years ago, for reasons that are not exactly clear. Although whatever caused their extinction on the Aussie mainland clearly didn't impact V. priscus. The youngest remains of this species instead date to the late Pleistocene, with the most recent remains possibly referable to this animal being a large osteoderm dating to approximately 50,000 years ago from the Mount Etna Caves National Park in eastern Queensland. This date of extinction lines up well with those of Australia's other megafaunal species, with the potential causes of this ecological downturn still being highly debated although a complex interplay of climate change and human alterations to the landscape through the use of fire have been proposed. With a lack of large, slow-moving herbivores to prey on, V. priscus, Thylacoleo, and the terrestrial crocodilian Quincana may have been starved into extinction. Let's hope that more complete remains of the former Megalania turn up in the future, so that we can at least get a better understanding of this iconic but mysterious giant lizard. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the bizarre Desmostylians, the only group of marine mammals to have gone extinct during the Cenozoic. See you again soon. Cheerio.